I think the affinity group uh, can bring a lot of different benefits. I think the first is that people feel more empowered if they're working in a group rather than working on their own or working as part of a huge group of a hundred people or a thousand people where it's possible to get a little lost. If you're really working with a group of people that you feel safe with, then it's much easier to uh, do a good action that can either be very practically, that a group of people can help you go over a fence, or it can be that you feel more supported um, physically or emotionally during the action, uh, and it can be better for communication and for planning, so it's really a way of making sure that everyone finds a place in the action. I think for a lot of people working in affinity groups is an important part of building a non-hierarchical movement. So it means that you can work in a big group but without leaders. So there are different ways of organising affinity groups. There's no kind of right way or wrong way but most of them will work in a non-hierarchical way. Which means there's no leader within the group and there's no leader outside of the group telling that group what to do. Instead you have people coming together in affinity groups to organise their own actions or to organise their own lives really. So some affinity groups just come together for one action, but some stick together for years, might squat together, might arrange their own food together, uh, might go on holiday together, have fun together, be in a band together. It's really a way of building up uh, an alternative society. So within a group, an affinity group might be 10 or 15 people. Uh, it might also be smaller, but if you have a group of 10 or 15 people, sometimes if you're in a demonstration or on a big chaotic action, it's not always practical to stay really together with your affinity group. But a way of avoiding being completely lost is to have a buddy, so that's someone within your affinity group that you will always stay with, and uh, you go on the action together, you come back from the action together. And that means that you have at least one person that you're always within sight of, so if something goes wrong or if your buddy uh, needs some support or if they have a great idea, there's always someone to talk with, always someone to support them, even if you get a bit separated from your affinity group at some point. So it's really kind of close support. And for example, in the action we were doing blockading the airport, uh, there it's really important if one person is locked on that they have a buddy who can really support them, give them food, water, cigarettes, uh, sun cream, give them a massage. So it's really very close support for that person. So a spokes council is a way of organising communication in a non-hierarchical way between the different affinity groups. So if you have one affinity group, for example clowns, one affinity group playing samba, one affinity group blockading, one affinity group um, holding banners, you might have one representative from each of the affinity groups coming together for a meeting and discussing things together so that you don't have to have a meeting of a hundred people on an action or a thousand people on an action. So the action can continue um, and one person from each group comes together to discuss. Hopefully they've already discussed with their affinity group and they can bring the views of their group to that spokes council meeting. Then either that spokes council can make decisions or sometimes if you want everyone to be informed the affinity group will make the decisions the spokes come back and says yes our affinity group has agreed or we'd like to make these changes. So it's just a way of making sure that everyone can be involved in the discussion without physically having to meet uh, because a meeting of a hundred people really listening to everyone uh, could take too long during an action. Your action would be finished before you've heard everyone's uh, input. The action training uh, that we did uh, at the action camp had uh, different components. We did one action training specifically looking at forming affinity groups. So what does a good affinity group have? What roles are there? What are some of the things you need to work out with your affinity group? And then we did some exercises um, about paying attention on actions and paying attention to your group, being aware of where your group is. Uh, we did some exercises on making quick decisions because on action sometimes you have uh, unexpected situations that you have to react to. So we did some exercises practicing making decisions in small groups. Um, we also did some exercises tactically uh, blocking uh, what's the best way to use your bodies in a blockade. Uh, but there's a lot of other things that we could have covered but we had two short sessions just as a kind of taste. I think for an action like we did at the airport in Liège, one of the really important things was safety, of course. How do you stay safe during an action? And that means not just physically safe, but also emotionally supported during the action. Um, I think also we stressed the importance of making good plans. And we saw a plan come together with a group of people over a very short period of time. And the plan worked 100%, it worked very well. We shut down the airport. 
but that was only possible because we had a plan. If we just turned up and said, okay, we want a blockade, it would have been complete chaos. So I think safety, good planning, knowing what the roles are within the group, those are really important uh, things. And then of course the tactics, how do you actually physically blockade? I think direct action is a way to reclaim your life. So on the one hand, it's about directly intervening where something is going wrong or to do something right. Uh, so that could be shutting down a company which is polluting or it could be uh, directly providing food or shelter through squatting or food not bombs kind of actions. Um, but it's also about reclaiming your life a bit, saying we're not going to wait for politicians, we're not going to wait for leaders, we're not going to wait for the establishment to do things, we're going to do it ourselves. We're going to get together with a group of friends or meet people on a camp like this and just do it. And that's direct action, whether you do it um, at an airport or in a squat or uh, at an international conference or in your own back garden, that's direct action reclaim your life. If something's going wrong, stop it. If you want something right to happen, do it. It was a, a great action, I think. The camp uh, came together really well, planned an action. We had people who were never involved in actions before, people who had experience, people who were scared when they arrived, people who had no idea what was wrong with the airport. All came together, organized a great action. There was also some good workshops, good content, good discussions about what's wrong with our planet, what's wrong with our politics, how we can build better solutions, better alternatives, um, and a little bit of discussion about how we go forwards now. And also, of course, a good place to meet people, meet old friends again, meet new people. Yeah, really, really great experience. I think if there was an easy solution to involving new people, we would be more than 200 people on the camp. I think it's a really difficult question and there's no easy answer but I think um, the way in which we communicate about the camp before during and after the camp is really important and I think there there's a tension between having a lot of our messages around anti-capitalism around uh, system change which are really important but how do we translate those into words which everyone understands if you didn't already know the movement if you didn't already know those arguments it doesn't always make sense to people what we're saying so i think we have to use language which people understand which means not just speaking french in french parts of the country and speaking dutch in dutch parts of the country but really using language which makes sense to people that it starts from where they are if they're struggling for their jobs you need to talk, people, talk to people about jobs and why it's not a choice between climate and jobs. If they're struggling because they have uh, no papers to be in the country, you have to make links between the climate struggle and their struggle. If they're struggling for food and struggling to eat, you have to make links with that struggle. And that's quite easy to say now standing in a field, but really when you go into discussion with people and when you invite people to the camp, being able to make those kinds of links is really important. Uh, even people who don't see themselves as activists, you have to find a way of reaching out to what's happening in their everyday life, really. Otherwise, it's just a, something for a group of uh, hard, hardcore activists in a field and they don't feel part of that community. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's not easy and I think we have to share experiences of what works and what doesn't and listen to people who come new into the movement and really find out from them, okay, why were you involved, what was scary for you, and think as well about our first actions. You know, I could think back to years ago when I did the first action. What was difficult for me? What was the point at which I thought, okay, yes, I will go to that action camp, or yes, I will take part in that action. And I think some of us have forgotten that. Um, so I think it's really important to just take a step back from action, 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 to really reach out to people, talk to people we don't normally talk to. Um, I think it depends who those people are. If I wanted to invite my neighbours to the camp, uh, for example, I know they're into music and theatre, they're quite creative people, so I might tell them, hey, come along, you know, there'll be some samba, there'll be some uh, chance to play music on the action, uh, there'll be a chance to find out more about what I do, there'll be a chance to do some theatre, this kind of thing. So that would be one way of reaching out because I know that's something they're interested in. I wouldn't go to them and say, you know what the problem is with an airport that's importing uh, beans from the other side of the world and da da da, because I know that's not their, 
that's not where they're thinking now. I'd start from where they are. And maybe I'll do that when I go home and invite them to the next action.